Welcome to this TPC demonstration video. This is the second part of the tunnel convergence workflow that has been added to version 550. This video will cover the tunnel convergence report as well as taking a closer look at the convergence tab in the tunnel view. You can refer to it the first video to see how we created our monitoring project as well as how we synced epochs with convergence data using the assigned tunnel convergence points command. Alrighty, so here I have the same project that I created in the previous video where I demoed creating a monitoring project and, and syncing points using the assigned convergence points command up here. And again, this video will focus on the convergence tab in the tunnel view as well as generating the tunnel convergence report. So right now I'm in the tunneling tab and I want to select the tunnel view under the view section here. It opens up this window on the bottom, which I'll make a bit bigger, and I'll select these down arrows here to move to convergence, which is at the bottom. I can toggle between stations using these arrow keys at the top right corner of the table here. And I also wanted to point out that instead of uh, selecting the command from the ribbon up here, you can also assign convergence points using this command button down here. It's the same one I showed in the previous video. I'll close this for now. And what I actually want to do is I want to change um, some vectors to be red, yellow, and green just to show that they highlight differently in the tunnel convergence report. So for the sake of this demo, I want to change 34A to be green. I'll leave 34B as yellow because it's currently yellow right now. And I want to change PC34C to be red. Basically, if any of these delta displacement values are greater than the warning thresholds, but less than the alarm thresholds, it'll turn yellow. And if any of these delta displacement values are greater than both the warning and the alarm thresholds, then it will turn red. I also want to point out that any changes made to the warning thresholds or the alarm thresholds in the table down here will also reflect in the properties pane. So I'll just open up that pane over on the side here to compare. Now, if I look at these delta displacement values, we see that the offset are actually pretty large and that's what's causing this, these vectors to turn yellow. So if I want to make 34A green, it seems like I'll need to change the warning threshold to be greater than this delta displacement. So I'll change it to be 0.005. We see that right after I make that change, the vector changes from yellow to green. I'll again leave PC34B alone because it's already yellow, and to make PC34C red, I will need to change this alarm threshold to be less than the offset displacement. That means that I'll make this 0 0.004 because the offset itself is 0 0.005. And again, right after I do that, we see that the vector turns from yellow to red. Now looking at the properties pane here, we see that the offset warning threshold has been changed from 0.003 to 0.005. It is bolded to indicate the change. The same thing happened for 34C. The offset alarm has been changed to 0.004 in the properties pane as well. Again, the project goes red and it indicates that there were changes made to 34A and 34C here. And that syncing needs to be done to sync these changes up to the monitoring project. Before syncing the project up, I just wanted to just show two more things. I also want to change the station warning and alarm thresholds so that the displacement station value is greater. Uh, I just want to do this to show that multiple columns for each convergence point can be highlighted at once. So even though it's already red, I'll make those changes. And the station warning has to be less than the alarm threshold, so I'll have to make that change first. I'll make it 0 0.001 and I'll make the alarm threshold 0 0.002. And uh, the second thing I wanted to do is I also want to make these changes for station 40. So I'll maneuver to that with these arrows over here. And um, we have green, yellow, yellow, and I'll just make PC31A red. So it seems like the offset displacement for 31A is the greatest. So I'll again change the warning offset to be, let's say, 0 0.002. And the alarm threshold can be 0 0.003. And now it is red in the tunnel view and in the plan view as well. So again, my project has gone red where I made the changes, so PC31A and my 34A and 34C points. So I will go to Monitoring, Manage, and Sync Monitoring Project here, and I will say yes, and the progress bar appears again, and I will resume in a bit. So now that it's finished syncing up, I'll just close the Properties pane here and the Tunnel view just to focus on the Convergence Report command. So I'll go to Tunnels, Reports, and Convergence Report at the end here. Now it'll automatically select my tunnel because I only have one. I only have one shape, so I'll leave that checked. 
And in this table here, we can see how many stations we have in this project, as well as how many points are assigned to each station. We see that the begin and end station have already been populated with the alignment here. And I'll leave the begin station as zero, but let's say for the end station, I want to stop maybe around here. So looking at this table above, that'll probably stop me at station 40, which is fine for my demonstration purposes. I only have two epochs, so I won't be specifying a time period, but you can if you want to. And under settings here, you can play around with the vector exaggeration value if you want. Um, this just makes the displacement vectors more visible if you need them to be in your report. For the sake of this video, let's change this to 200. I will leave the default of using the same scale for all stations. I only have one shape, so that should be fine. I'll hit apply and run this report. It should open up in Microsoft Word. So here I have the tunnel convergence report opened up in Microsoft Word. The first page is just a general overview of the project, so it's showing me my report start date and my report end date, which are just my epoch dates, so October 12th and October 13th of 2020. We see that the number of stations is five, and if I scroll down to the next page, to the summary, we see that there are indeed five stations here. Again, this ends at station 40 because I set my end station to be around 45, and the next station would have been station 50. Next, we see the points column here, and we notice that it's actually in reverse order from TVC, so CBA instead of ABC. That's totally fine because if I scroll up, how the report chooses to order points is actually by starting in the middle here where your alignment would be and moving clockwise. So we see that it meets 34C first, then B, and then A. So that's fine. Next, we have the number of epochs column, and we see that all of these points showed up in both of my projects. If one of the projects didn't have one of these points, then it would say one. Moving on to the next page, we have the vector graph diagram for station 10. This shows the tunnel plan view, the tunnel cross-section view, and the tunnel profile view. And if we look a bit closer, we can see that there's a little arrow here showing the displacement direction. This was affected by my vector exaggeration factor, which I changed from 100 to 200. If you make this factor bigger, it'll make the displacement vector bigger as well. On to the next page here, we have the displacement chart, which shows displacements for station, offset, and vertical. This is my first epoch, and this is my second epoch. And the next page is my displacement detail. Now, if you remember, I made 34C red. I made 34B yellow, and I made 34A green. So for 34A, nothing is highlighted because none of the displacement values are greater than the warning or alarm thresholds. For 34B, the offset was already yellow, so I just kept that the same. And for 34C, I made the offset alarm threshold less than the displacement value. I also made a station alarm less than the station displacement, just to show that it can highlight multiple different columns for one point. Now if I go to the next page, we're met with the distance analysis detail. This will just show you the distances between the points and how much it changed over time. And the next page is just the same thing, but for the next station, which is station 19. I'll just quickly jump to station 40 to see that the highlighting changed for that station as well. So for station 40 here, we see that again, it's green, yellow, red, and it's highlighting properly. That should conclude our demonstration for the tunneling convergence workflow that has been added to version 550. Thank you for watching these videos.